As the prophet of esports, I rely on trustworthy and meaningful data every day. Data from a research partner, YouGov, offers the most complete view of esports fans and gamers in the world, providing context to who they are, what they think, the brands they buy, and things they do. YouGov's connected insights and research services inform strategy at every level. If you're a team, a brand, agency, or rights holder, you should be talking with YouGov. Their partners measure and maximize ROI and are telling compelling stories with data. Visit yougov.com slash gaming dash esports to learn more. I mean, we could do, we could do, you want to do like lightning round through the rest? We could yeah, do that. Let's, yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Yeah? Uh, yeah, it's a great idea. Okay, so let's yeah. let's lightning round through the rest here. Okay, here we go. First one up is, is going to be this one here. Hang on. LeBron James's company receives epic investment to bring more stuff to Fortnite. So we were on the epic topic. It looks like <laughs> LeBron's Fortnite collab from earlier in the summer won't be his last. Uh, LeBron's company, Spring Hill, announced that it raised a round of financing to expand internationally. And one of the investors happened to be Epic Games. So Epic Games is investing in LeBron's essentially production company. Mm -hmm. They raised $725 million from investors that include Epic, Nike, and Fenway Sports Group. Wow. What do you think of this? LeBron's the king. This is awesome. I was really excited <laughs> when I saw this story. I thought, well, this had to have been part of the talks before LeBron's skin and his involvement with Fortnite ever were made public. Um, I, I give him massive credit for kind of seeing that in, in advance and, and working that out as part of the deal. And also perhaps even seeing the success of his uh, appearance in Fortnite and wanting to take it to the next level. Uh, we know LeBron's son is uh, affiliated with FaZe Clan. And I'm, um, you know, with that kind of money and those kinds of names behind you, I think, you know, we've been talking a lot about how gaming is now the nexus of pop culture. And I think when you have companies like Nike, companies like LeBron backed by Epic, uh, you know, how does that not transcend pop culture and, and take us, you know, the next step further? Uh, I'll, my only comment on this is I'm pretty sure this confirms that lebron will be the face of the fortnite movie in some way like if if we think the fortnite movie will be uh did, did you see space jam i don't know about that I was gonna, <laughs> I was gonna say, <laughs> if the fortnite movie is the next space jam-esque movie yeah. lebron's the face of it for sure i think i think honestly uh just just to extend the lightning round a bit uh fortnite has so many characters with custom skins right that i think there's gonna be a lot of cameos in it i don't know if I think Bunk uh, Jonesy is their is their main guy, you know, the blonde default skin. But I don't know yep. who the voice actor for uh, him will be, but he'll definitely be the main. And then you'll see all the other skins making appearances. I'm excited. You know, I was a Fortnite gamer three years ago. I'm excited for that movie. So. Um, okay, let's move on. Like we said, lightning round, right? Yep, all right, let's did. let's move on to the next one. Uh, gaming and apparel brand Hundred Thieves is getting into hardware with its first acquisition. 100 Thieves is acquiring gaming peripherals company High Ground, spelled mm H-I -hmm. ground. Um, High Ground, they make uh, keyboards, I think, uh, and head, well, I, I don't really know what they make, but they yeah. did a collab with Beats uh, where they just put, I think, a different colorway on it. Um, I think Zebra or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it looks like High Ground is being acquired by 100 Thieves. Well, you like this? You hate this? I know enough already just by seeing that headline to comment on this. I think this reaffirms that 100 Thieves is a hoodie org and they're looking to push merch. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the comments I've had with a lot of different esports, um, well, you know, people in esports, uh, specifically with teams, is that their biggest hurdle is that their competitors, their players, are so particular about the peripherals that they want to use because maybe this company has a better mouse and this company has a better keyboard that it's hard for them to sign sponsorships because to win they feel like they need a, a mix and they can't stay uh, loyal to any one company that wants branded exclusivity when you see a company like hundred thieves that is i used to think it was a great idea like why not you can sell so much of it uh but i was only thinking from one lens which was the business side and, and how do we push as much merch as possible if you look at these orgs that want to compete and that want to win or that want to 
be more than just a, a sales arm, uh, then you're hamstringing the rest of your players to and forcing them to kind of use and push your own product. So I'm not a big fan of this for, for a competitive org. Uh, it, it shows me that 100 Thieves is really, you know, just pu pushing merch, which no disrespect to that. It's a cool play, but it's, uh, you know, it's not going to win titles. Yeah, I, I got, <clears throat> it wasn't, it wasn't, um, uh, directed at me uh, in a in a like a direct way, um, but it, I think it was clearly a shot at me because I've I've pushed this idea of hoodie orgs probably more than anyone in the industry, um, and and then the comment was something like, "Well, I don't understand the negative connotation of hoodie orgs," and uh, I thought the comment was a bit unfair because first of all, calling something what it is is not is not an inherently negative connotation. It's like, right. look at the headline here, gaming and apparel brand. Like this is not right. esports org 100 thieves. Um, right. So so there's definitely like some of this, uh, you, decide what you want to be. And if you want to be a gaming and apparel brand, you know, the prophet calling you a hoodie org, don't be offended, right? Like don't, because that's what you are and that's your business model and fine, you know, more power to you. But and we can discuss the pros and cons of that. But don't be offended by it. To me, hundred thieves getting into hardware is like, uh, God, got to be like top five mismanagement. Like it, it just proves what I've said about hundred yep. thieves management. A ten thousand percent clueless. These guys wouldn't are not uh, are not qualified to to manage a hot dog stand. Never mind an esports org. And and I think great they can sell out you know 200 hoodies and and everyone pats them on the back. Selling hardware is really difficult because you deal with you know mechanical problems, returns, like shipping a big physical keyboard versus a T-shirt you can roll up and you know like there's just so many other considerations. This seems like a massive distraction. If I'm an investor, they're using my cash to buy something that doesn't seem core to the brand, right? Like what happened to being media and hoodies? Now we're hardware also. Like what's next? They're going to build 100 Thieves. They're going to buy Ford and build 100 Thieves cars. Like it's just, it's it's all, they're all over the place. They don't know what they want to be. Um, and it's just, it's management that's more concerned with their personal brand and image, I think, than building an actually good business. I think we're in agreement. I hope it works out for them, but I wouldn't be surprised if, if they don't have a successful end of the year and if they are raising more money, you know, before this time next year. Cool. Um, can we talk about something awesome, though, that's like obviously genius, um, uh, you know, in stark contrast to 100 Thieves? Netflix wants to make a squid game video game. I thought you were going to bring up this story. I love this. Well, uh, it, it, how do you right? How can you not love this? This is brilliant. It's brilliant. Um, one, we were talking about Netflix getting into gaming and what it's going to look like. Uh, two, you know, pairing these games with their successful titles. This is the biggest show they've ever had. And three, we've already talked about other games like Roblox and Fortnite that have made their own Squid Game type of game modes because of the popularity of the show. So having the official one through Netflix, it's it's the smartest way for them to get into this space. And, you know, I, I love seeing this. Also, if you haven't seen the show, it's really, really good. It's really, <laughs> really, really good. Gabe says, Squid Game Game, Squid Game Game. That's that's not going to work. They're going to need something else. Uh, <laughs> sounds pretty fun, if I'm being honest. It does. I agree. That does. I feel like that. Like, to me, it's just Netflix at their best, like, tying things together. It shows gaming as you know, the the other sort of anchor of entertainment, the fact that Netflix wants to turn this into a video game, you know, leveraging their IP. It's just, it hits all the all the buttons of things I think we can, are consistently fans of. Um, the, the To me, the crux of this is, if it takes them two years, they've missed the boat. Absolutely. This needs to come out in the next three months, I think, and even then shorter is better. Yeah, yeah. Um. All right, let's uh, let's move on here. I said we were going to go quick. I have a couple more. Sorry. This one I thought was interesting because I actually met with I met with them today, um, and I also think this is kind of 
genius. Uh, let me just agree these co read these comments. Greg says red light, green light with a PC. Yeah, <laughs> maybe maybe a little less heart wrenching, but you know. Uh, Gabe says I agree with Jimmy. I think by the time it comes out, the hype will be dead. Mm. As long as it's not like a year or two, I think they'll be okay. Uh, I think the hype will still be there. Um, this is an interesting one, Jimmy. It's Wisdom Gaming and Mall of America announced first of its kind partnership to create Midwest Esports Hub. And so you, everyone knows Mall of America, right? I, I don't know if it's still the largest mall in the US, but it's definitely up there. It's probably top three, if, if it's not the largest still. Um, and so they're planning on building 18,000 square foot broadcast studio and esports venue in the mall. It'll be open in early 2022. Production, it'll have production capabilities, the whole bit, uh, a retail shop, a gaming lounge with food and beverage, seating for a live studio audience, et cetera. Um, so they will be able to put on esports, I guess, events, tournaments, stuff like that, broadcast them, produce them all there. You like this, Jimmy? You know, I, I do. I like the thought. I want to see how it's implemented and what it looks like in, in person. It's hard, you know, because I don't live in the Midwest, so I doubt I'll have the, the chance to walk through something like that. But we've been talking a lot. You know, we had Jordan Sherman and Immortals on and them talking about their interest in the Midwest space, how it's, uh, you know, a market with, I think, just the Minnesota rocker and nothing else out there, right? And, and a massive opportunity, specifically in that region. Um, and we've talked a lot about how, you know, for esports to really succeed and gaming to succeed, you need to have more opportunities or more physical space that aren't just land centers where it's part of the culture, right? It's not a, a destination. It's part of wherever you're already going. So on paper, it sounds great, but there's a lot of room to screw it up. So, so let's see what they do with it. I'll tell you what I loved about it, which is there's probably no business. Well, there's probably a lot of business, but one of the businesses or types of businesses suffering most is like traditional retail especially malls, right? And I've, I've continuously said, since literally probably episode one of this podcast, when I talked about Apple taking over the, you know, GameStops in the malls, um, like malls have so much vacant space right now. They're all hurting. Yeah. I don't know why more malls are not going out and them actively seeking out things like this, capabilities like this, production facilities, esports arenas, yeah. mini land centers, arcade, like, Anything to draw in the gamer crowd to their mall would is a massive win. And anything that's sort of experiential is a massive win. Experience. To me, huge missed opportunity for every mall like and kind of you know retail space like that that is sitting with empty spaces right now. I, I don't get it. I, I will say though, to you know, to just to, on the other side of the fence here, just just something I'm looking at is a big part of the business model of these physical spaces and these experience type you know, brick and mortar, uh, esports, you know, land centers or what have you is the food and beverage and the other opportunities that they can, they're not making their money off of a $6 an hour share, you know? And so the fact that the mall has the food court and other things where you as the business don't capture that from, you know, depending on what, what these look like there, there is going to be some difficulty there. But, um, so like I said, I, I want to see how it's implemented. But Jimmy, if I'm the mall, I'd be putting up all the cash to building this out myself. I wouldn't even wait for a Wisdom Gaming. Because for me, what I care about is I want the Apple Store to stay there. I want the, you know, the, the gap to not shut down because no one's in the mall. And so how do you bring people through the mall? You need some kind of draw. And to me, that's, that becomes the draw. I would be investing in that if I'm the mall owners and the mall operators um, as a way to bring people through. Like, never mind... Forget about making money. It doesn't even have to make money. It has to bring people into the mall, in my opinion. We, we, it's kind of we had talked about GameStop converting all of their stores right to something like this, which which we think they should have done. So maybe they'll do that after this becomes a potential success. I don't know. It is a it is a cool idea, um, and I think it's fun. Can we talk about another video game coming out? Which game is that? <laughs> this oh, one. God. This one less probably less exciting. Little Nas X releases free browser video game, Twerk Hero. Uh, the rhythm game is a tie-in with his latest hit single, Montero. Um, so Little Nas X, who we talked about on last week or two weeks ago, doing a music yep. video with League of Legends. 
um, also the Hundred Thieves uh, collab that he had done the week before that. Now doing his own browser video game. Little Nas X basically putting out more games than Activision Blizzard has in the last three years. Um, what's, what and more you diverse too. Um, as, as a guy who has straddled music and gaming previously. Yeah, you know, I don't know how I feel about the browser game part of it, but I, I like seeing pop culture icons <laughs> supporting our space fundamentally. That's a good thing. Um, that, that, that's I, that's kind of the limit, I, I guess. I'm not too, I'm not going to play it. I'm not excited by it. I'm not a big fan of his music. I've heard a lot of his, you know, he had that number one chart topper for over a year. Um, you know, all credit to him as an artist and, and to what he's doing in the space, like we said, with, with you know, with League and with 100 Thieves. Um, I just don't know. Why is it a browser game? You know, that's my criticism. So why isn't it a mobile because game at least? I, that's part of my frustration, but it's also like the Netflix activation, I love it. Right? Seems genuine, seems like it's a good fit, frankly, seems like it would be a fun game. This feels so cheap. This feels like just, you know, I'm he's hot right now, he's everywhere right now. Like just one more thing on the pile, right? L along with the little Nas X, uh, you know, uh, scarves and, uh, you know, baseball caps and like, oh, I'll throw a browser based game on there too, right? Like, yeah. It's just, it's the merchandising playbook, and now gaming has been added to that. Yeah. Um, and it just it feels a little cheap. I get it, but it's also interesting that it's now part of I think what is like a almost like a standard celebrity merchandising mix. Uh, you need hats, you need t-shirts, you need well now you need a browser based game. Um, I'd be more excited if if he announced like something all uh, Grand Theft Auto, you know, or, or even a storytelling yeah. game. Tighter like, integration. Don't put it out this year. I don't care. Develop it, but like you can announce it now, and but just make it a real game and something that's uh, authentic. No, I don't no, sorry, I don't say that. but something that's yeah. a tie-in with an existing good game. Yeah, right? there's yeah. lots of games where him and his personality and his character, like like actually like you could be something in GTA, it could be something in Fortnite, it could be right. There's there's yeah. a lot of places they could have put him. Yeah. Um, yeah. A browser-based game feels cheap and you it's know super exciting in 2006 you know oh yeah <laughs> that's, that's true 